Good morning, this is going to be the last run through my apple seedlings uh, to do like taste test run and see what's left out there. There actually is some stuff that isn't ripe yet. I've been really busy just trying to scrounge up some money for, you know, t to pay taxes and debts and stuff to get by. And so I can't make that much content, but you know, I'm anxious to get on to other stuff besides apples. And if anyone else is too, uh, that's great, but don't whine about it because I have to do this project. I'm like eight years into this project. It's a big project and uh, it's really important that I document this stuff. We're gonna start with this one, the uh, quote unquote black apple. It is red on the inside, very, very dark on the outside. Like when you see it, it's very striking. I have three really dark apples here basically, which is King David, Black Oxford, or Oxford Black, I think it is, and this seedling. This is definitely a King David seedling. When you put King David and this in a basket together, it's actually a little hard to tell the difference, but this is more angular, it has a different bottom. It's got more speckles like grenadine, although it's very similar to Oxford Black. The flavor on this has been incredible. Unfortunately, it adopted a lot of the other negative characteristics of grenadine, and my whole purpose is to breed out those negative characteristics like the poor texture and the early drops um, and all that stuff and keep the flavor. Well, this got the flavor. It's not the same flavor, but it's just as strong, if not stronger, and just as good, if not better. This is one of the most flavorful, amazing tasting apples I've ever tasted in my life. Unfortunately, it's also uh, tends to go mealy. However, it doesn't do the early drop thing, it doesn't seem like. But I think there's a lot of potential with this apple for breeding, for sure. Um, I'm probably going to name it because it's just easier, like even if I'm just using it in breeding, it's easier to keep track of something that actually has a name than like a number, and this doesn't even have a number, and the, the temporary name I don't like, so I may name this, but let's taste it. Wow, it's actually kind of crisp. Wow. So if you see that kind of translucent, watery looking stuff in the middle, that's water core. It makes the apple really sweet and it gives it a, a distinct flavor. Like water core has its own flavor. So whatever, that, that gets layered on top or underneath of whatever the flavor of the apple is. The other flavors in here are mostly strawberry. I ate one yesterday with somebody and he said, beyond strawberry is what his comment was. Uh, in spite of its flaws and potential problems, this is just really encouraging because it kind of validates my choice to go after grenadine as a breeding parent because of that flavor. Yeah, uh, yeah, it is transferable. And not only that, there's a palette of flavors in that gene pool that could come out. Like this is just an extraordinary flavor. So let me try part that doesn't have water core. It's incredible. So the texture on this apple is actually totally fine and that's encouraging. You know, like maybe in a different year, in a better year, once the tree like starts to fruit more because this is a, for the first year this uh, branch is fruited. So I'm thinking black strawberry, pretty cool name. What do you think? I'm so stoked about this apple, even with its flaws. It's just, it's so encouraging that I'm going in the right direction here. Okay, perhaps the second most exciting apple this year is this one, and I'm probably going to name and release this. I may even name it soon, because I'm just that sure that I'm going to want to propagate it. It's flat, it has a russeted top, it has a very firm flesh that seems like it's going to hold up. This is out of the refrigerator, and here on December 3rd, and let's see what it tastes like. Very firm. It's still very hard and cleaving but it's not really crunchy or crisp anymore. I think this would be a really good cooking apple because it actually has a pretty high acidity. There's nothing wow about the flavor. There's like, there's nothing sensational about it, but it's very pleasant. Yeah, I mean, this is a real promising apple. Again, it doesn't have anything that's like a wow factor to it in terms of the flavor. And even though the flesh is, it's almost hard, um, it still breaks down pretty fast in your mouth into like juice. Um, it's real, it's real nice. And especially as a late cooking apple, I think this has a lot of potential and uh, it just looks really cool. Okay. Out of the fridge again, this is the Grenadine Gold Rush Cross 11.5. 
this was picked and put into the fridge in like the first video I did. I mean, it had to be like over six weeks ago. It's holding up really well. I don't think it's ever gonna hold up the same way that its parent Girl Drush does. There are certainly some similarities between the two apples, but it's it's a really nice apple, you know. If it wasn't for Gold Rush as a benchmark, I'd probably be more excited about this apple, but it's quite good. It's real sprightly, kind of refreshing, crunchy. The, fl the texture is still really crunchy and nice. Yeah, that's a promising one. So this one I just picked this morning, and this is a Wixen Cross. I can tell it's a Wixen Cross. It's not labeled. It says Grenadine X question mark. It's definitely a Wixen Cross. You can taste it in there, and you can see it too. A pretty small apple. There's a big specimen there that I cut in half. 28% sugar right now. It's easy to walk through these rows and take every bad apple and say, oh, that could be a cider apple, right? That could be a good cider apple. But really, most of them, like, they could bulk out a cider or something like that. This apple, however... I think could be legitimately a good cider apple. Something that you would actually propagate on purpose to make good cider. It has a significant amount of nice uh, tannins in it. More than average, more than your average dessert apple. It's actually fairly acidic on top of that. I mean, not real acidic or real sharp, but you can tell it's not you know, I mean, it's definitely there. The flesh is almost woody. There's like a lot of fiber in the flesh when you eat it. So when this is ground up, it's going to press out really nice. And we are here on December 3rd. You could have pressed this, um, you know, three weeks ago, maybe more. It hangs on the tree well, and it has more flavor. It has the Wixen flavor a little bit, but it also has more fruit flavors. The flavor is very rich. So for all those reasons, I think this is uh, worth looking at as a cider apple for reals and not just because it's no good for anything else. So I'm kind of excited about that one. All right, let's hit the rows. Also with this Grenadine Wixen Cross, you see the, the stem here is very red and the leaves are very red, like the fall leaves are very pink. Uh, maybe with another similar cross, like my Wixen Rubiot Cross or with, uh, yeah, something. I have a pic, I took a picture here this morning of this, but these are the leaves of this red stemmed uh, Wicks and Cross that I think would make a good cider apple. You can see they're, they have a lot of pigment in there. Okay, this is Grenadine question mark 11.7. My guess is it's a, a, a seedling of Lady Williams. I'm not going to taste this right now. It's fairly acidic, not super like rich flavor, but I think it would make a really good late cooking apple and it's uh, has hung on pretty nice here. Again, it's December 3rd. We're just going to look at a few of the more interesting apples in here. Grenadine Wixen. It's just a big apple, no red flesh. Well, that's a pretty respectable eating apple. It actually has a very rich flavor. Kind of generic, uh, fair amount of acidity. It'd be nice for cooking. It's pretty good for eating. Again, no wow factor, but it is very rich. It's actually fairly sharp, so it could be a good late cooker or a, a good addition to cider, you know, just for sharpness, you know like blended with something like that apple we just looked at. And this is Grenadine Gold Rush 1115. This one looks good. Mm. Yeah, this wouldn't be too bad. It's actually similar to that last one. It's pretty rich in flavor, but it is actually better. I remember this one. It has an actual bitter component. Now I have my eye on this one for a while. Boy, that's really hanging on there. I figured I'd just bend it and it would break off. It's Grenadine Gold Rush 1117. I just feel like that's not ripe and I should leave it longer. Everything else on the tree is really poorly developed, you know, like this, and these are definitely not ripe and they're not gonna ripen well. Oh, that's like woody, green, bitter, and tannic. I'm gonna leave that. This is Grenadine Gold Rush 11.8. This has developed a real kind of translucent look to it. Hmm. Hmm. That's a rather curious flavor. It's like this weird aromatic high note that's hard to pinpoint. Yeah, this is kind of intriguing. It's very sugary, very juicy. It's easy to eat. It's a little odd, but it's intriguing. Huh, interesting. Like, I want to finish it. So this is Grenadine with Golden Russet 11.2. It doesn't look ripe, but everything else on this branch has uh, basically ripened and fallen off, so we're just going to try it. 
It looks like we have some pink flesh. You can see this pink flesh right there. Let's bite the pink part. It's very acidic. Given the acidity and the large size, the, again, could make a, a good late cooking apple. The flesh is a little bit fibrous. Um, I wouldn't call it woody, but the, just like, it's like pretty pulpy. Again, that could be good for cooking. You never know, like it might actually hold together if that's what you want. Like some people want apples that hold together when you cook them, and some people want apples that fall apart when you cook them. It's very acidulous, like very acidic, but definite uh, berry flavor, and I would say it's strawberry. That's interesting, especially if this is not ripe and it becomes an, a, an apple that ripens at this time of year. We could ripen it better with more sun. Like it could be better than this is what I'm saying. Uh, so this is actually kind of interesting from the aspect of like a late cooking apple. It's also quite tannic. So we'll see. Uh, but I really don't think this is really ripe yet either. So, Okay, one of the most intriguing apples this year is this little guy. It's a grenadine golden russet cross. So there's only two left on the tree. I keep coming out here and eating them because they're so intriguing and weird flavored. We're going to taste one of the last two here. I have also a few uh, in the fridge to see how those do. Early in the season, this had this flavor that's kind of like this yellow apple flavor that I don't like. I mean, I really consider it not it, like a flaw in apples, in yellow apples. It's not the usual yellow apple taste, it's something else. It's like an overtone or something. But now it's developed quite different, and it has a collection of, of aromatic high notes, is what I would say, that kind of like dance around on the top of the flavor profile, but they're real hard to pin down. And I, I think it's more than one, and I, I may have a couple of ideas of, of what those are now. It seems to be hanging really well. Again, it's December 3rd and, and these are hanging steadfastly the tree. Some of them have fallen off, but a lot of them were hanging on uh, for dear life. Very, very crisp. If you like crisp, that just like super crisp crunch bite. This has it in spades. It's also very juicy. So as you chew it, like you get all this, this rush of juice. The flavor of this apple lacks body or heart. Like there's no center to it, or, um, no meat to it. It's not really rich, but it has these strange aromatic flavors, like I said, that just kind of like circulate around the top and you get hits of them and then they kind of go away pretty quick. The hair up. I think the main thing I'm tasting is basically pine, you know, or fir or spruce, any any of those kind of conifer flavors. It's very intriguing. It's fun. And like I said, there's not a lot, a lot of body to the flavor. So it, it sort of like dissipates really fast and it makes you want to keep eating it, especially because it has this amazing crunch. I mean, just incredible crunch. It's not a very fibrous apple. It's like it, it crushes up into juice really fast. Like you might've seen when I bit that, like some juice like squirted out, you know? And then in one of them, I, I swear I tasted a lot of banana, but I haven't tasted that since. Uh, so I think the main component though is conifer. My guess is that this, you know, if I had more apples on this tree or if this one survives, that it's going to hang at least least another three weeks and very likely up to like six weeks or more uh, longer which is pretty cool. Given the incredible Christmas and the fact that it carries red flesh jeans this might be something to cross with like pink parfait which is a super late hanging apple with a really crisp really juicy outstanding texture. Kind of intriguing right? Well, I don't think this is going to be any good, but let's taste it. It's Cherry Cox uh, with Rubiot, 13.6. You can see the Cox's Orange Pippin lineage. Uh, Cherry Cox is from Cox's Orange Pippin. It's got these kind of like stripes. Hmm. Hard, crunchy. Well, it's hard, it's crunchy, it's very tannic. Inside of my lips and gums are drying out and sticking to each other. Uh, wow, well, you know, Again, speaking of cider apples, this is tannic enough to lend a lot of tannin to a cider. It's very sweet. The texture is really good and crunchy and hard and firm. As a dessert apple, I don't see a lot going on there. I mean, it does have nice flavor. The flavor is there. The crunch is there, everything else, but like the, the real strong tannin kind of ruins it for a dessert apple, I think. Maybe for processing for other stuff too, though. There's a lingering aftertaste of uh, spice going on too. Here's a similar grenadine golden russet that's also like this clear yellow. Yeah. It's like everything I hate about a yellow apple and it's super tannic and it's a bitter. That's a loser. This thing's just too scabby and useless for anything. And I think it tasted horrible. 
Ah, super woody. I kill that one. What's that? Let's get this one. I think this is ready-ish. This is Grenadine Lady Williams 11.8. Uh-oh. That's the wooden apple. Like I had to extract my teeth from it. I couldn't bite off that piece. And now the pucker's hitting. Ooh. Okay, that's like the worst apple award. I had this one marked as a cull. Let's check it out. This has a lot of fruit on it still. They're probably not ripe. Grenadine Lady Williams 11.13. Another super tannic Lady Williams cross. Very puckery, not great texture. Break these branches so I know these are ones I want to call without having to look back at my notes. This one and this one right together are kind of similar. All right, this is Grenadine Lady Williams 11.9. Okay, here's apple number two where I'm like, yeah, this could be a legitimate cider apple like that we would actually bother to propagate. It's got the pink flesh. It's not strong, but it's there. Uh, very high sugar, very rich flavor, lots of tannin. And the flesh texture is pretty tough, kind of woody. Some of them are a little bit rubbery. Very rich, very, very sugary rich juice. I mean, lots and lots of flavor with mixed like complex fruit flavor. And let's see how this holds up after tasting all those. Incredible berry flavor. Mm. Okay, thanks for watching. I don't see any reason to come back out here this year. Lady Williams crosses are just not worth it. I might do a video surveying the entire apple year and what I learned and what like the best varieties of the entire season were. We'll see.